Now, have a look in the book as well for more examples. Can you read the examples? You need a book about advertising. Yeah. Alex. Um, where is that? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you need a book about advertising. What you need is a book about advertising. Okay, so you can say both ways. <laughs> but if you use this cleft sentence, then you emphasize what you need is a book about advertising. Uh, next two examples, please. Mm. Me? Yeah. Um, I'm going to apply for a job in marketing. What I'm going to do is to apply for a job in marketing. Uh, Pears created the first brand of soap. What Pears did was to create the first brand of soap. Mm -hmm. So, uh, pay attention to the second one. What Pears did was to create the first brand of soap. Although uh, the first part in past is in the past, uh, they add uh, this uh, clef sentence with two plus infinitive. So it's not what they did uh, was created the first brand, but what they did was to create the first brand of soap. Just copy one of the examples uh, from the book. I suggest you copy the second one. I'm going to apply for a job in marketing and then what I'm going to do is to apply for a job in marketing because it shows exactly that the highlighted verb and do match. Can you also say and can I also say what you need to buy is uh, are some vegetables for cooking. Vegetables. Yes. What you need to buy are some vegetables for the cooking. Are vegetables for the cooking. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, by this you emphasize that just vegetables you need to buy, not anything else, yes. not meat or yes. fruit or anything, vegetables. Yeah, <coughs> you can say so. Right, um, are you ready? That's it. One more minute. So, other types of cleft sentences. Uh, here you see just the examples of how uh, you can use these cleft sentences um, to emphasize different things in your speech as well as um, in writing. So, can you read the examples, Sivan, please? Uh, the thing that I most disliked was the color of her dress. Mm -hmm. So, here a person wants to emphasize that he didn't dislike the person, maybe in general, her her, uh, her character, features of character, but was the color of her dress, right? The emphasis on the color of her dress. Next one then. And the only thing I won't do is phone her again. Okay. And all you need is love. Uh, you have it on the whiteboard. Um, so the information was taken from moment advanced learner's grammar, right? Advanced level is the way to help. So uh, can you think of uh, your own examples uh, built in the way these two sentences are. So the only thing that I won't do or will do. Won't. Raul. Uh, the only thing that I won't do is uh, <laughs> um, to go on space. The only thing that I won't do is go, into space. go to space. You mean travel yeah. the spaceship? Um, Alex? <laughs> um, the only thing I won't do is uh, open the window. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be more realistic now with your examples. Uh, Daniel? Uh, the only thing I won't do is uh, wake up at 7 in the morning. On Sunday, on Sunday right? yeah. <laughs> um, The thing that I most disliked or liked uh, was... Alice? The thing that I most disliked was the exam in the ninth grade. Okay. The one? The only uh, subject that I uh, disliked in school was geography. Okay, very good. Kate? 
uh, the only thing that uh, the, the the thing that I most disliked was uh, the coffee. In that in that cafe. In that restaurant or cafeteria, right? Um, any questions? So, do you have the idea of a cleft sentence now? Do you understand how to use it? Yes. That makes difference. Two or not? No, no difference. If you feel more comfortable uh, by using two, use it. But remember that after two, you have infinitive, right? If you omit two, just be careful because uh, uh, if uh, the highlighted action is continuous or perfect, then do has to match it. So I say if you're not sure, uh, you'll be on the safe side using two plus infinitive, right? Especially when you do your writing. Um, it comes very uh, handy when you analyze something and uh, especially when you write your essay and you write about the advantages and disadvantages and then in the conclusion when you want to state your point of view, uh, you can use these clap sentences. Because what we don't have in uh, writing, we cannot use our pronunciation, right, to emphasize something. So in this case, flat sentences. Uh, now we'll do some exercises to practice. So have a look at the whiteboard. Emphatic structures, clap sentences, exercises. So let's read the information in the box and then complete the replies. Alice, please. Nick turned up late for work on Monday because he's got stuck in a traffic jam in the ring road. Mm -hmm. Luckily Nick has a mobile phone so he was able to phone his boss and warn her that he would be late. She was furious but managed to reschedule an important meeting for the afternoon. Okay, so here's the story, right? Now your task is uh, to change the second sentence <coughs> to plan one. Nick was late because he overslept, wasn't he? Well, say someone in the office asks. The other one answers, no. It was because of traffic jam. It was? Because of traffic jam. That he was late. Write it down. Write down just the second part of the sentence, uh, but uh, in your exercise book. So it was because of the traffic jam that he was late. Next one, Raul. Um, how on earth did Nick let the boss know he would be late? Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, the well, the what? Well, what? Call her from his mobile phone. Um. How on earth did Nick let the boss yes. know? So how did he let? What he did is he was call her from his mobile phone. What he did was, and you can also say here to call her or call her from his mobile phone. Anna, number three. Uh, wasn't Nick late on Wednesday? No. Hmm? That he was late. <laughs> no, the only... No, he... Can you please yes. show me the story? Uh, the story... Yes. Okay. You have uh, Wasn't Nick late on Wednesday? No. He went... No. It no, it was Monday. That that he was he late. was late. No, it was on Monday. On that Monday. on Monday. No, it was on Monday that he was late. Write it down. Number four, Ivan, please. 
uh, Nick, Nick's boss had to start tweeting about him, didn't she? Uh, no, what she did uh, was to reschedule. Reschedule? Report, reschedule. Uh, the meeting at the afternoon. For, 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 the, for the afternoon. That's correct. No, what she did was <coughs> to reschedule the meeting for the afternoon. Next one, uh, Daniel. Uh, thank you for the most difficult one. Number five. <laughs> well, wasn't it you in the morning shouting that you're the best student in the class? Yes. <laughs> so, um, yes. Does not work, bro. Uh, yourself. Didn't Nick get stuck in a traffic jam in the town center? No, uh, not in the town center. It. Uh, oh, it, it was on the ring road. Where he got stuck. That Nick oh, got stuck. That, that Nick got stuck. But you can also you say where he got stuck. Mm. It's loud. So, uh, no, it was on the ring road that Nick got stuck. Or where Nick got stuck. Six. I heard the boss was a little annoyed. Could you please move it a bit up? I heard the boss was a little annoyed with Nick for being late. Now she wasn't a little annoyed. What she was was furious. Bravo. What she was was furious, right? So here you have to use the word was, the verb was twice. Okay, so we did some practice now. I believe you're able uh, to write sentences, the following six sentences for the mark. Can I put the top of it? Have you finished yes. writing? All of you? Can you read the task, Diana? Forty-two percent is twelve. Writing a sentence is similar as possible the meaning to the original sentence, but using the words given in bold. Okay. Can you see the words given in bold? All isn't what only thing that's doing. Look through the sentences. Any words that you don't know? I don't think so. <laughs> For example, the first... Do you know the word au pair? Yes. Yes. Can you explain uh, me the meaning of this word? Uh, I think it's something uh, when you when some students go in another country, they do au pair. So au pair, first of all, refers to a person, yes, right? Pair, pair. So it's a person who... Who's changing the country for working in another country or, or doing uh, pra 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 practical. So there are two purposes, yes. right? When a person goes to a foreign country, yes. first one, he looks after the household or after the kids. And the second one, he also attends lessons of English or German, depends which country you go to. And you live in a host family, and uh, their first half of the day, for example, you do your duties, like looking after the kids or uh, doing the house, uh, looking after the house, right? And then you have some time for yourself, you go studying, and at the end um, they also award you with a month visa in that country and the opportunity to travel in that country. Um, well, uh, I read in, in my time at the university years, I read about American au pair. Uh, there you had uh, a month visa in America, which is a very a good chance to travel to see and they will also give you a car and they will uh, give you your allowance, your money, like, I don't know, um, it's in the contract sort of, right? And once you uh, fulfill your job, right, to the best, then you will be awarded with this money and this opportunity and a car also to travel. So this person is called au pair, 